Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com and I'm currently on the brand new, beautifully amplified navigator of the seas. And I wanted to start the tour here just to show you this incredible complex of water slides that they just added to this amazing ship. So in addition to the perfect storm coasters, you've got the Blaster, which is the longest aqua coaster at sea ever built. And you can see right here where you, other coasters use gravity. This uses water to propel you up and you actually go over off the side of the ship and it's open air. It's such a really cool and unique experience. But what I wanted to talk to you about was the entire ship has been gut renovated from floor to ceiling and she's in the most beautiful shape she's been since she was launched. So follow me on this incredible tour of the Navigator of the Seas. All right, so one of the super awesome things that Royal Caribbean did with the Flow Rider when they built it is they built this great stadium, stadium seating all around it so you can watch. So right here, everybody's taking note. This guy's really good at it. Um, and we're gonna head around here and you can get a great view of the flow rider. He's currently boogie boarding and just finishing up, but did not wipe out. I usually end up wiping out and finishing up top. I did wanna point out they have this great separator that they've added recently. So it cuts it in two. So now you have two flow riders where you used to just have one. Right here, you've got a nice rainforest shower where you can get uh, you know, start or finish of the flow rider. But as we follow around here, one of the coolest things that Royal Caribbean did with the amplification was that they built this incredible water slide complex and it wasn't here at all before. So before you just had the one, the one tower that was a smokestack, they added in a massive tower for this. And I don't know how they did all the structural changes, but it is so incredibly cool. So right here, you got the sport court. That's been there since uh, the very beginning of the ship. Um, but what you'll see is woven throughout the sport court, you have the blaster, which is gonna be an aqua coaster. This is a concept that um, it, the only other ship that I know of that has it is the, the Disney ship with the, the aqueduct coaster. But it's such a cool thing because what happens is, is you're going on it, it's not fed by gravity. It's all of a sudden you get a big boom and you get the water that pushes you again and you go out over the side of the ship in the open air. That is such a unique and cool concept. So follow me along as we can see it more in the background here. One fun, uh, you know, nostalgic piece for me is where the coasters finish up used to be the rollerblading uh, course. And, you know, 17 years ago when this ship came out and even longer ago when the uh, Voyager came, rollerblading was a really cool thing. Got to rollerblade an ice skate. Now people don't care about it quite so much. <laughs> so this is where um, you take the slide, it's gonna pop in there and then they just send the raft all the way back up and then you're gonna come down on a double raft configuration. One cool thing is they also have a face first slide, a head first slide that you may wanna check out. For uh, the surfboard on the Flowrider, you gotta be 58 inches and uh, boogie board 52. Just wanted to point that out in case your kiddos aren't quite that height. So now we are on deck 14 and in the Viking Crown Lounge. So this is had, this, on this particular ship, it's had several evolutions, but this is now a Zumi restaurant here. Um, it's really, really a beautiful space and you have these massive panoramic windows. Um, but uh, what the first thing that sticks out is if you are a royal fan and you've been on the Oasis class, um, you'll know that Azumi on there does have hibachi as well. This particular one doesn't, but it has incredibly elevated Japanese cuisine and of course sushi and some of the best sushi, sushi chefs at sea. How's it going? So you have an assortment of dining options. They've got two top tables, four top tables. They can put them together for larger families. And then of course you can dine at the sushi bar here. They're just getting ready to for, well, for a little bit later, and I wish I was staying long enough to eat all of those things that they're preparing right now. So if you'll follow me, we're just gonna head right past the, uh, the elevators one more time. And then we're into the heart and soul of the Viking Crown. So this has been a signature of Royal Caribbean for an incredibly long time, these Viking Crown lounges. And they're big, open, spacious areas, but you get some of the best views in the entire ship. And in addition to that, you get incredible views for people watching because you have the pool right below us, the new lime and coconut bar there. Right, so incredibly ideal seating because you're inside and nice and cool, um, but you got beautiful views outside. And then over here is gonna be kind of uh, turned into a live music venue, also a nightclub venue uh, for dancing in the evening. And there's a full bar over here as well. So a ton of seating up here, great uh, for little groups. Usually when I have uh, my groups on board, this is where we'll start or this is where we'll meet to have our opening cocktail, you know each other, check out the views and then enjoy the cruise. So you've got the, uh, the crow's nest bar right here. So once again, there's a great bar seating there, a little bit more in the back, but at the end of the day, this is one of the most light and airy rooms in the entire ship because you have panoramic windows all the way around. All right, so now I'm headed into the suite lounge. Um, for those of you who are big Royal fans, you will immediately remember that this used to be the 19th hole bar way back when, then it was the Diamond Club, and in the recent renovation, this turned into the Suite Lounge. So for me, if you're traveling in a suite, it's gotten so much sweeter. It's gotten incredibly better here uh, with the amenities and the space, and I love that this space has these open, huge, beautiful views. Because way back when, when they first launched, the Concierge Club was actually an interior room, no light, and it wasn't that big. So now the space has gotten quite a bit bigger, uh, and in my mind, a lot more beautiful. So let me walk through here. 
So this is uh, the food station and drinks. Um, so in the afternoons, you'll have, uh, have beer and wine and things in here. You've, right now you've got uh, set up for some food. Um, and then later on in the evening, after about 4.30, you're gonna have uh, a, an honor bar here where you can grab uh, all kinds of uh, different uh, hard alcohol beers and wines and things along those lines from about 4.30 to 8.30, 9 o'clock every single night. So that's a great value to have all of that included for you. And then they're also gonna have some canapes and hors d'oeuvres. But at the end of the day, the whole point of this is to have a private space away from everything else. So let me show you a little bit more around. So you've got an assortment of tables here. So you've got a nice, some nice bar tables here. Okay, and then as I work my way around back, um, you can see behind me is actually the outdoor area. I'll take you there in just a minute. But I just wanted to show you that during the amplification, they put in this gorgeous new furniture. It's ultra plush. It looks like it's in incredible shape. You know, and the ship is uh, you know coming up on 20 years old uh, in just a few years here. So it's not a brand new ship, but they've tried to make it look as new as possible. So follow me through here. You can see a little bit more of that beautiful decor. Got a large screen TV, which is great. Watched uh, some sport games and things like that in here before. And then we'll walk around um, to the most important person in the lounge, which would be the, uh, the concierge here. Um, so they're gonna take care of all of your needs throughout your entire cruise. I did wanna point out that just behind here, you've got all the menus. They're gonna help you with making those specialty dining uh, reservations, but you can also check what's on the menu in the dining room that day, or you can see the menus for the specialty restaurants. Um, they've got a printer there. They'll help you with all kinds of things like printing your boarding passes and things like that. Okay, and then here's a little bit more information. Once again, the bar menus um, and all that. And then you've got your daily compass and all of the information that you're gonna need throughout the cruise, including your adventure ocean information. So the long and the short of it is, is that person is going to make your cruise so much better because they can handle anything and everything that really causes stress for you. And the whole point of vacation is to avoid stress whenever possible. All right, so now I'm heading out onto the deck of the suite lounge. So once again, a bonus space, and this space is only for suite guests and also for Pinnacle members. So Diamond and Diamond Plus will have a separate lounge, which we'll show you later. Um, but I did want to point out that this is all brand new furniture. It's beautiful. I was just on the Symphony of the Seas two days ago, and this is the exact same furniture that they're using on the suite area there. So it's really, really modern and, uh, and beautiful. But what I love here is that you have an incredible view for some people watching. So you got some spaces in the sun, some spaces in the shade. Right here is the rock climbing wall. So a lot of fun to people watch there. And then as I continue on along the suite deck, um, right below me is the sport court. That's been there since the very beginning. Continue on over this way. I'm gonna take you over to uh, the other side of the suite deck. My buddy's here going. Been a while since I seen you, okay? But anyway, uh, the last area, but once again, a private area for suites only. If you are staying in any of the suites on board the Navigator of the Seas, or you are a Pinnacle member, this is a massive improvement over what it was before the amplification. So come on board and give it a try, and I know that you're gonna love it. Okay, so one of the things that they did with the amplification is that they moved the mini golf course. So the mini golf course on the Voyager class has always been in the very back, and that is where they put in this massive slide complex. So I'm gonna walk you through it. This was actually kind of an underutilized um, deck space anyways. They added these nice loungers that are very private and protected. Uh, they put out all of the full loungers here. So once again, you can see a couple more of those day beds there. And then as we walk around to the very front of the ship, what we're gonna get to is uh, what they're calling on this ship, Navigator Dunes, essentially mini golf. Before we get there, I wanted to show you this really cool uh, rainforest shower that they put in. So there you go, I'll just hold it there. Don't wanna quite get wet, but just a, a fun little addition up on the top deck to cool you off. So let's head right over here. So this is hole number one of Navigator Dunes. Let me grab a putter here. Well, I might need one a little bit taller than that. Who knows? It's a complimentary feature on board, ball and the putter. Shoot, I don't even know where I'm going. All right, there we go. So this is a par three. I gotta stay out of the water, I guess, is what we're looking for here. But let's come across. I don't know quite how that was possible, but anyway, there we go here. All right. Nope. No. All right, I got a bogey, it's all right. To me, miniature golf and cruises goes completely together. It's something that we've always done. It's one of those things you can do just about any time of the day. You're looking for something fun, maybe to get away uh, and just do something enjoyable. I love doing it with my uh, daughter. And then anytime we have friends on board, we always do some kind of mini golf tournament. But once again, this is a brand new space and they did a great job with it. It's really beautiful. And I love that they put it in a place that was underutilized anyways. All right, so now we're gonna continue on. Uh, basically this side is exactly the same as the other side. Great place if you're looking for a sun deck. You got some more day beds here. You can see that they haven't quite set the loungers up. They'll do that after the passenger safety drill. And then every day they'll set them up in the morning here and on the pool deck. 
so you'll have a great space. So, And one thing that I did want to point out is a brand new space on board the Navigator with the amplification. So just in front of me, just below me, is going to be the solarium. We'll talk about that in a second. But over there, I'm not sure if you can see it, you have the rooftop that they've converted the lime and coconut bar. So it's actually like a three-level concept now. Uh, I've got great furniture, but I'll show you that when we get it, but you get a better perspective of it from here. Right when I get down here, the very, very first thing that I notice is all of this new deck furniture and these cabanas. These did not exist before the, um, uh, the amplification, and I think they're not only aesthetically beautiful, but it adds a component to the decks that they've never had before. So this particular area I wanted to point out, so this is for uh, pinnacles and suite guests only. So uh, in addition to the suite lounge and the suite lounge deck, what you're gonna have here is a separate space just for those of you in a suite. So you can come out, it's quite a bit of space, nobody's using it now, and that's pretty normal. So as I head over just a little bit further, um, we're gonna look down on the solarium. So this is the adults only area on the ship. You got two huge hot tubs down there and then the plush padded loungers. But of course the signature is that it's adults only. Um, and that's great about this ship is there's several spaces that are for kids, for adults, for everybody together. And I think they really do a great job of filling the needs of every member of the family. So we just walked across and now I'm gonna head up to the lime and coconut rooftop that I was just talking about a second ago. So what I wanted to talk about the most is that this is not a new space. It existed, but they reimagined it into a new beautiful space with all this new modern furniture. Um, you can see, and it's the third deck. So this is this new comp concept of the lime and coconut bar. It'll be on all the ships, I'm sure, because it's been wildly successful. Uh, but the best part of it is you have very comfy place to sit. And then over here, you get some great uh, you know, people watching from here, but you get a great view of the entire deck including the brand new screen that was added with the amplification. So I just came down from the top of the uh, lime and coconut bar and I'm gonna show you the rest of it here. Once again, they totally reimagined this space with the amplification. So here is uh, one of the bars themselves. You can see the total tropical theme here. Go back to the South Pacific. Beautiful bar. So this is all the second level of the lime and coconut down here. Once again, you see this absolutely beautiful new furniture. You got uh, padded seats here, some bar tops over here. And then once again, to me, this is what this space is the best for, is it looks out over the entire pool deck area. Once again, you've got the brand new screen, the Viking Crown Lounge, uh, and then this beautiful new reimagined resort style pool deck. All right, so we're gonna continue to head on along deck 12 here. Um, what I see on both sides, you've got these great cabanas that we pointed out before. Um, one thing that I did want to add with those cabanas, and I'm going to show you that in just a second, that they really thought of everything. So in addition to, uh, you know, to having everything you would expect, um, I'm just going to poke in here real quick and show you that you've got, um, they just, guess just left two seconds ago, but you've got some USB ports here, which is just a great feature to add. If you're going to have a cabana, it's something that you really want, but it is a complimentary feature. So they added these huge uh, oversized hammocks, you're gonna have all the deck chairs that you've come to expect uh, from Royal Caribbean spread out throughout. And then there's also uh, this beautiful whirlpool that they have on top here. And in addition to being just a great you know, place to hang out and uh, get uh, well, hotter, um, <laughs> you also have a great view over the side down onto the pool deck. So we're gonna continue along here and you see you've got uh, the shower. They've got these on both decks. I really love it because up here, uh, you wash off before you get in, but you can also cool off because it is a hot tub. One of the things that I absolutely love that they added on board are these beautiful hammocks. So they're oversized, just like me. Oh, there we go. Oh. Uh-oh, gotta balance it out, but. Uh, is the tour over? No. Yeah. Wake me up for a perfect day at Coco Cay, that's for sure. Okay, so one of my favorite new concepts that they debuted on the Symphony they brought here is the complimentary one, and it's called El Loco Fresh. So it's just really good grab-and-go Mexican food. So here you can see they've got a full uh, salsa bar with all the different accoutrements that you might want on your Mexican meal. Here you've got cheese quesadillas, chicken quesadillas, beef and chicken burritos, nachos, and then of course make your own tacos. So I love the concept, and once again, having a great complimentary option like this really, really has elevated the experience. One other brand new concept on board the Navigator after this amplification is Johnny Rockets Express. So what you've got here is a quicker and smaller version of Johnny Rockets. They've got all your favorites. You can buy it, get at Johnny Rockets since the, they launched the Voyager. Um, you've got phenomenal shakes, burgers, all of that kind of stuff. But my favorite thing, of course, is the apple pie a la mode with Tillamook cheese. That's how my grandma did it. It's the only way to do it. Um, and here you've got a bar that they added in as well. So these two new concepts, El Loco Fresh and Johnny Rockets Express, really add to the overall experience. So, And then over here, 
Everybody's favorite stop is, of course, the complimentary soft serve ice cream. I love it, it's the best, biggest line on, on the ship so far. So let's continue through here. Um, this is their other brand new concept. We've seen the top levels um, already. And then this is the lime and coconut bar. So you have this great seating with uh, um, nice shade areas, phenomenal bartenders, and this really great South Pacific theme. So you see that throughout the entire ship. It's kind of a new theme for this ship. And I really, really like it because it's kind of given it its own personality. So here you got a couple, couple uh, a little bit of eclectic seating there, which is fun. And then I wanted to show you the life jacket. So right here, they've got life jackets for the kiddos. They always have lifeguards on duty when the pools are open. So please use the pools only when they're open, especially the kiddos or just in general. Um, you got adult and kid size life jackets, just like on Coco K. This is where you're gonna check out your towel. So you do need to check them out and in and out with your CPAS card. So make sure that you uh, understand that that's how Royal does it and that you uh, pay attention to where your towels are. Right here is the PADI Certification Center. So you can do your full scuba certification. This is something they have on all the Royal ships. It's a partnership they've had a long time. And uh, here you can see uh, a little bit more and some of the things that you can purchase in addition to doing the trainings. Take it down just a little bit because this is the quieter adults only. I noticed a major change of noise going from the area where the kiddos are to the adults. So you've got a great uh, hot tub here. It's extra large. You've got one on the other side as well. They added these new uh, cabanas in here, which is uh, something that I really appreciate. And then I'm gonna head over and show you the solarium pool. So one thing that you'll notice is all of the, uh, the chairs have extra padding. Um, so that's different than on the main pool deck. They've also added these little day beds um, in addition to it. And then right there you can see you've got the solarium pool that is adults only. So this is that spot where you wanna go get away from the kiddos and have some nice peace and quiet and enjoy the sun. Okay, so now we're headed into the Windjammer Cafe and also included is gonna be Chops and Jamie's Italian. So follow me on in. The first thing that I notice is they've totally redone the decor. It's much more light and airy and it's really, really beautiful now. So right as you walk in, something that you notice that they added was these hand washing stations. I love it, I really appreciate it. Everybody needs to wash their hands an incredible amount of time on any cruise or dining experience to make sure that you stay safe. So right when we walk in, um, the very first restaurant that we have right here is gonna be Jamie's Italian. All right, so I'm headed into Jamie's Italian, which is a brand new concept on the Quantum of the Seas, and they've added it to every ship since. But this is the last one that's going to be on there uh, because that, that has ended actually, and the next one's gonna be an evolution of Giovanni's Table. So what you see here is a beautiful, modern Italian uh, restaurant. The cuisine is, is fantastic. It's all about being fresh, um, and he's really, really uh, concerned about the ingredients and how they use them. So I've loved every meal that I've had in Jamie's Italian on board, and what you see of this is just a great space that they've totally, uh, completely updated, added, modernized, and it's just in incredible shape because it just finished the amplification. All right, so as we head out, I did want to point to the wine cellars that they have here. All Royal Caribbean ships have incredible wine cellars on board, and this one is not uh, any exception to that. One of the things that they did was they really opened the space up and added different size furniture and different kinds. So there's a lot of different seating arrangements from a table to 10, to a two top, uh, to even some with, uh, with benches and such. So you've got a great bar here right when we come in. They have that Ely Espresso, once again, that you do uh, pay a little bit more for the espresso there. But that's my favorite place to get coffee on the ship because they do have the Ely. So here you've got exactly what you expect in the Windjammer. You've got the fruit stations, salad, uh, ready to go food, uh, rice and stir fry, um, and also some fantastic Indian food. I've been really impressed with the Indian food on Royal Caribbean International. Then I wanted to just point out the beverage station. They did update this, which I really appreciate. Um, so here you've got your coffee and tea and everything you need there. Also, you've got the Vitality water. So this is something new that they added that's self-serve. So you've got your water and ice, but also iced tea, lemonade, kiwi, strawberry, things like that. So I'm gonna head right around the corner here. I just wanted to point something out. So one of the new concepts uh, that they brought on a couple years ago was a partnership with Coca-Cola. So when you buy the Coke package, you actually get this great this, uh, tumbler that sits right here. It's got RFID, so it kind of communicates with the machine, and then you can pick any of the sodas that you want. One little uh, quick hack is if you don't have the soda package, you can still get ice from here and water as well. You don't need to have the tumbler. So you have these all throughout the, the entire ship. So as we continue back into the Windjammer, you're gonna see they have these great stations where um, they've got international food here. Um, so Italian on one side, it looks like you've got some Asian uh, dishes over there. And then my favorite station of all time is always gonna be dessert, of course. So one very last thing, this is where they're gonna do the eggs and things in the morning. It flips over to be the grill in the afternoon. So we're gonna get your hot dogs and hamburgers and all your favorite Americana style foods. Once we cross over this kind of halfway imaginary barrier, what actually happens is you have essentially the same thing on both sides. So I'm just gonna walk you through here a little bit quicker. There's a ton of seating in the very back. Don't ignore it. 
but they also have these great areas for large families to sit. Um, and as you can see, just a mix and match of seating throughout. So one of the things I always do as soon as I board is, you know, a lot of times the buffet is gonna get really crowded up front. So I usually go to the very, very back and I can find seats. Um, right now we're getting a little bit later in the day, so it's pretty much cleared out. Everybody's in their rooms and taking advantage of, of the other complimentary options on board. Okay, so now we are headed into Chops. So this is also in the Windjammer complex. Chops is uh, one of the, I think it's the very original Royal Caribbean International Specialty Restaurant. It is a steakhouse. It's an unapologetic, classic American diner style steakhouse. So here we go. You can see we've got the beautiful decor. They updated it completely with the, uh, with the renovation and there's some great different spaces. Once again, you've got a mix of large tables here in the back. Um, you've got some booths, you've got two tops, you've got you know five and six, so it's great whether you're traveling just the two of you or with your whole family. Okay, so now I'm heading into the Vitality at Sea Spa. So I will preface it with, um, you know, with all the renovations they've done over the last couple years, the, the spa is quite a bit smaller than it was, um, but they still have all the services that you would expect on a spa at sea and they do a really great job with it. So follow me on through. Just through here, you're gonna find the treatment rooms. What you notice is they've totally updated the decor. It's really beautiful there. Okay, and then we're gonna head around. You can see they're all numbered. They're all for different purposes, um, but uh, they have you know couples massages. They have all everything that you can imagine. My favorite is the hot stone. Can't go wrong there. Right through this way is the women's locker room. You can access it from the front or from here. And this is the relaxation room. Um, so this is where you're gonna come when you're getting ready for your spa treatment or after your spa treatment, where you can just sit, relax. Usually they'll have you fill out the paperwork, um, you know, so that they can understand who you are and what your needs are and what you're looking for in the spa treatment. So just uh, on through, here's the rest of the spa. I'll point there, you're gonna have the, uh, the men's locker room. One thing that I will say that is a little bit of a disappointment to me is that we've lost the steam and sauna room uh, on there. Um, but, you know, for me, the things that they added kind of outpace that and I think it's uh, you know it's something that if, if you come specifically for that you may want to think about that before you come uh, but if not I think most people won't even notice that they're gone. So we're gonna head on through here and this is the uh, salon portion so this is where you're gonna get your manis and your petties uh, maybe you're gonna get a shave maybe you'll get um, any of those treatments but uh, this is that spot for it so it is a full service spot. So the Vitality Fitness Center on Royal Caribbean was actually moved here a couple years ago. But one of the things during the amplification that they did is they totally renovated the space and uh, turned it into a completely new and modern gym. So as we walk in here, of course, it's really nice and cold. I love that. And then here you've got all of the different uh, machines that you're gonna use. You've got lockers here, which I think is a great touch. And of course, the clean towels, they ask that you please um, use them throughout. Also, you're gonna find these Purell hand wipes everywhere. Please, 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 while you're using the gym and everywhere on the ship, make sure you stay nice and clean. That's the way that everybody on the ship is gonna stay healthy. So come over here, they've added some TVs in. Um, you've got some leg machines and others here. Now we're gonna head back and you've got uh, some more bikes here on the side. Um, kind of in a separate space now here. Um, you're gonna have the, uh, the treadmills and the ellipticals. So one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna step on here, height check, I'm a pretty tall guy. Many cruise ships in the entire world, I don't fit on any of the machines because it's not tall enough. But I do appreciate that they put these cutouts here. Um, you can't really see it, but it's actually higher than everywhere else in the gym, very intentionally for gigantic people like myself. Um, one of the things that I was uh, kind of, you know, not so excited about when they moved the gym was losing that front facing view on the treadmills. Um, but what they've done here is they've added that space here in the back now. So once again, you can use the ellipticals and the treadmills and look out and have a beautiful view of the ocean, right? So the very last space that I wanted to point out is right here. You got your free weights, um, you know, bench press and things along those lines. Got all the different barbells that you might want to use. So essentially, this should satisfy your gym needs for the three, four, or seven night cruise that you would have on the Navigator of the Seas. Just past here, outside of the main gym area, you're gonna have the aerobic area. So in here, you're gonna do the spin classes, um, yoga. They do all kinds of classes. And one of the other things that you could do is you could do personal training if that's something that you're interested. So they have all the services that you would expect at a full service gym on land. They're gonna have on board here as well. So now we're heading into the Royal Babies and Tots in the Adventure Ocean Center. And this is something that was done as part of the amplification. And I really like it because it kind of opens up cruising in a different way to those with young kids. So unlike the bigger ships, they don't have the open play space, the open playroom where they can come in and, and parents supervise. But here what they do is you can actually drop them off starting at six months old uh, and they will, they will do full babysitting services. They'll uh, change diapers um, and also uh, you know put them down for a nap and things along those lines. So it is a paid service. Um, you're gonna pay 
stay uh, a little bit more in the evening than you would during the day. Uh, but it's just a great option uh, so that mom and dad, especially if you're going on it uh, with you know without other family members, but so mom and dad can have a really good time uh, on the cruise and the kiddos can as well. So just back here is uh, the area where they've got the cribs and where they're going to put them down for a nap. It's darker. And then, of course, um, they have uh, all the, the new technology as far as sanitizing. They do a really good job with that. Um, and they have you know any of the toys that are soiled that the kiddos play with, they take them out um, and then they, they'll clean them before they put them back in. So one very last thing that I wanted to point out in here is uh, the kids' bathroom. So I don't always point out bathrooms, but what I wanted to show you is they did a great job creating a space for little people. Um, when my daughter was potty training, for her it was really important to have you know these kind of places where she felt comfortable. So it was the the sink was at her height, the toilet was at her height, and she had a very uh, you know easy experience. So those of you who have young kids know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I'm in the main area of the Adventure Ocean Center. So there's been a massive change with the samplification. They've added all these really cool things. There's a ramp up here, rock climbing wall for the little kiddos just through. Um, and then as we get around, what you're going to notice is this is a huge space, way bigger than any of the other spaces that they've had on uh, the Adventure program, Ocean program. And the reason is that is they've changed it. So on the Navigator, three to 11 year olds are going to be in this space. Um, and then we'll take you to the living room in a minute, but it's a larger open space. They found with siblings, especially it makes it a lot easier, um, but we're going to continue on through and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So lots of really awesome nooks. I know kiddos love to hide out. I know my daughter always is looking for a fort. So you can see something like this where they can crawl in and play and then they have some up against the wall. They've got a ton of uh, TVs on. Right now they got Paw Patrol so I know my daughter would be locked in. And then as you move over here, you've got this great uh, video game rockers and they've got the, the new you know, technology set up for them there. And then as we continue on, you've got these uh, the Fat Boy Bing Bag chairs where they can sit and watch a movie on a huge TV screen. So you can see this is a much larger space because it's all those spaces on the other ships kind of pushed together. So now we're going into the living room, which on uh, the Navigator of the Seas is now for 12 to 17 year olds. So once again, it's uh, one large space. It is a really cool and beautiful space. It's meant to look kind of like a urban loft a little bit, but you've got these big screen TVs all around. You've got different seating areas for when they do arts and crafts. Um, you also have these huge loungers, which is great for the teenagers. And here it's kind of like a, you know, you're at home sitting around the couch watching a massive screen. So this is four large screens put together. Some funky uh, decor, of course, which all of the teenagers are gonna love. Another seating area, some books, so you can check these books out and you can read them in here and borrow them as well. And then I'm gonna continue on this way to a, a really cool aesthetic feature that I like. So in addition to the pool table here, you've got this great VW van, kind of continues on the continuity from the thing down below. Um, and then we'll continue through here to the back where you have this uh, video game nook. So you have the ability for uh, four TVs, uh, but eight of the, the video rockers so that they can compete against each other. And what teenager does not like to play games and compete? There's also restrooms inside, which I like because the kids don't have to go out to use them. They can just stay right in here and stay contained in the club. So one of the things that they've had on Royal for quite a while is an arcade. So this is the Challengers Arcade uh, Teen Area. Okay. Um, so what they've done with the recent renovation is they've added a few new concepts, including this Jurassic Escape. I noticed it on uh, the Symphony of the Seas as well. So this is kind of a virtual reality experience where you put the goggles on um, and the whole thing moves. So it's kind of 4D for you. Uh, but as you walk around, you just notice that it's just classic arcade games. Please note that there is an extra charge for this. Um, so you want to talk to your kids about that. That's something that you can set up at the advance of the cruise. You can put a budget on them. You can set where they can spend the money. Um, but right when you walk in, they're going to have to buy credits that would be used here. So finish off here at Ski Ball, which is the all-time classic arcade game, and a little bit of air hockey. All right, so we are on deck five, which is where the Royal Promenade is. Once again, this is boarding day, so it's gonna look a little bit different than it would throughout your cruise. Um, but what I wanted to point out is this is where you can grab all the cruise compasses. Um, depending on what language you speak, they have them all there for you. Um, there's also more of the, the paperwork. You can get your uh, information on the Voom Internet, Adventure Ocean, all those kind of things. But this is the passenger services area. The primary uh, purpose, of course, is to handle anything that you would need that has to do with money or amenities or anything else along those lines. So as we continue on, past guest services. Uh, the next place that I'm gonna show you is the Shorex desk. So of course you can do all of this before your cruise, but if you have any questions or you need to do something on board, 
this is the place. Um, one of the great things about these shorter cruises, they go to Perfect Day at Coco Cay. Some of them do it twice. Um, so there's just more information on that. A lot of times uh, people wait on, on uh, that kind of thing to book on board just because it's a relatively new concept. And I'm gonna take you right around to the other side here to where you have the R bar. So the R bar is a retro 70s style throwback is what it's meant to be. Um, there's different iterations of it throughout the entire fleet. Uh, but what you'll see is supposed to have that throwback atmosphere. This actually used to be the champagne bar here. Um, so it's a little bit of an evolution, uh, but I'm gonna continue on this way. And I just wanted to point out uh, a couple of the really fun things in here. So you can still see the bubbles in the windows. It has to do with when it was a champagne bar, but they open it up. They have a lot more seating, different kinds of seating. This is fantastic for a larger group of friends. Um, and then you also have this really fun seat. This is a signature of the R bars. You're gonna find this at all of them. So it's kind of this uh, picture uh, frame here. But uh, once again, just uh, a lot of fun. Okay, so now we're heading on to the Royal Promenade. For me personally, this was that space that was unlike anything I've ever seen and it got me really, really excited. There's a couple brand new concepts that they introduced with the Voyager of the Seas. So first off, you have this massive three-story uh, indoor city street, essentially. So you're gonna have retail on both sides. So the Port Merchants is where you can get uh, really good pricing on uh, alcohol and cigarettes and things like that that you wanna buy duty-free. Uh, regalia is gonna be the uh, luxury watches and jewelry and things along those lines. Okay, and then we're gonna continue on and we are gonna see uh, something that, that's themed throughout all of the, uh, the Royal Caribbean promenade ships, and that is a vehicle. So you can see that it's a fun place to play, but this is a Volkswagen thing, which, well, those are all-time classic awesome ships. They make me think of surfing, make me think of the ocean, so I think this is a perfect fit. Immediately, what you're gonna see up and above is these staterooms. So there's actually three levels of promenade view staterooms, so it might be something you're interested in. Maybe you like an inside cabin or you want that lower cost, uh, but for you, you don't want to. You want to have a view and be interactive. So these ones are all great. You can sit in the bench seats there, look down onto the promenade, and participate. In this space, they're going to have all kinds of parties. They're going to have parades uh, and all kinds of fun. So on this side, you're going to find the collection, which is uh, like all the Royal Caribbean brand uh, logo, brand gear, and things along those lines, perfumes. And then I wanted to take you into a brand new concept for Royal Caribbean International, which is the bamboo room. You know, right away when you walk in, it makes you think of Trader Vic's in Oakland, which was the uh, the, the tiki bar that kind of started it all. Uh, but you can see this is all brand new. Of course, it's all new upholstery and everything else, so it looks like it's incredible shape. But it's a brand new concept, and I really like it. It makes you feel like you're in a tiki bar at sea, which is a, well, frankly, if I'm going to be at sea, put a drink with rum in my hand, I'm a pretty happy guy. So let me follow on in here. I'll show you the rest of it. This is the full bar area here. Beautifully done. Okay. You can see the uh, the the tiki glasses that they have for sale there, and then, well, it's tiki time. One thing that I did want to point out here is that all of the drinks are handcrafted, and so it's probably going to take a little bit longer through than, than what you're going to find other parts of the ship, but that's the cool part. So my favorite one that you may want to try is the On the Run. It's kind of served to you like a, like a grown-up Capri Sun, uh, and it just uh, floods the memories back. It is delicious, but once again, it might take just a little bit longer, but it's all about taking your time in a tiki bar. So just show you this one part here. Love the way that they've done this. It's just really a beautiful, beautiful place, and it's a great concept, and I am 100% sure they're going to be putting it on all the rest of the ships. So we're going to continue on down the promenade here, and the first thing that I wanted to point out is that right here you have uh, the entrance to the casino. So you can get to the casino from deck four, or you can come onto the promenade, and you can head down here as well. One other brand new concept on board the Navigator of the Seas with the amplification is the two dry four dry bars. So we all know that this is the, uh, the big trend, the hotness going on right now. And it's perfect for a cruise ship because a lot of times uh, what, what a lady would just want is to have a, you know, do the blowout and have uh, all that done so that you can go out, get all dressed up, tape those beautiful pictures and just have a really elegant night, especially on the, uh, the formal night on board Royal Caribbean. So just take a little walk around here. You can see over here it's set up as a full beauty salon. You've got the, the area where they're going to wash the hair. Um, and then you've got the full uh, bar here as well. So you've got a little bit of a mix, but uh, definitely give it a try if it's something that you're interested in. All right, so just across from to drive for, uh, you're going to have the copper and clover um, pub. So basically on all the royal ships, you're going to find a pub. It's exactly what you think it is. It's kind of that English, Irish style pub here. There you're gonna have a live musician. To me, that's what really you know, makes it into that, that full atmosphere. Um, it got a nice facelift during the renovation, but you can see they've got a bunch of four top tables here. It's really just about being social and then a full beautiful bar, but it makes you think like you're sitting down at a bar in England. 
So as you can see, the, uh, the pub extends out onto the promenade, and these are some of the best seats that you want to get uh, if you want to take part of some of the parties or uh, the parade. So one of the other things is uh, different weather. They do things in different places, and right here was where uh, the Badger competed for his uh, Sexiest Man Alive contest. Uh, in our minds, he definitely won, but uh, you know, anyway, just a, a fun fact for those of you. Um, on this side here, uh, you're going to see Ben and Jerry's. Um, so once again, you uh, you will pay a little bit more, but you got the full Ben and Jerry's, and then you also have a Seattle's Best uh, coffee shop where you get the espresso drinks. So once again, uh, Starbucks is down further, and then here you're going to have the Seattle's Best. So I'm going to continue down on the promenade, okay? And I'm going to head into the cafe promenade, which is where you can get all of those grab and go foods. So this is uh, this is something that's pretty popular, especially later on in the evening. And this is a complimentary venue. So here you've got uh, fruits, uh, sandwiches, and things like that to grab and go. Of course, the dessert's my favorite, and the pizza. So every time I walk in here, I always get that wave of the uh, pizza smell, and I absolutely love it. I've had pizza here a few times all throughout every part of the day. So inside here, you've got a, an eclectic mix of some bench seating. Um, you've got some seating indoor and outdoor, so some out on the promenade as well, and then a few more seats tucked back there. But once again, this is just a great complimentary option on boarding day or throughout your entire cruise, especially late into the evening. All right, so next, I am gonna head across to a concept that I am incredibly excited about. Technically, it debuted on the Mariner of the Seas, but also came out on the Symphony, and that is Playmakers. So this is something that I think all cruise lines should have. I don't think, uh, I think Royal may even be a little bit late in the game to it, but they did a really great job at it. So at the, the heart and soul, what it is, is it's a sports bar. So you're gonna have pool table, foosball table, shuffleboard, um, you've got some arcade games, but what's really awesome is you have these massive TV screens all the way around and a beautiful bar here with more TV screens all the way around. I'm gonna follow you, have you follow me back just a little further. And here you've got the, uh, the owner's box, which is just another great private venue that you can utilize on board. Um, I will show you, you got, you got a menu here. This is some things that you would think about for bar food and they do a great job at it. So now it's on three ships and it's getting ready to go, I'm, I'm sure fleet wide really quick. All right, so just had a great time playing an oversized Jenga game, a little foosball, and now we are heading out of Playmakers and we're gonna head over to uh, the Diamond Club and the Star Lounge. So as we're doing it, I just wanted to point out this massive high atrium. So when the Voyager class came out, this was a challenge for them. How do we put in uh, elevators that can be that, that tall and uh, operate on a ship? So it was something that, that they solved actually for the rest of the industry, but uh, this was a groundbreaking ship. Nothing had built close to the size and it's amazing to me to think that, well, the Symphony is a 50% bigger, it's absolutely insane. All right, so now we're heading into the Star Lounge. So this is a space that's used for all kinds of things for Royal, but when I walk in here, the first thing that I notice is it's in beautiful shape. They've redone all the decor in here. You see it on the sides, brand new carpet, brand new upholstery, um, and it looks like actually better than it did when it was first released. My favorite things that happens in here, you know, like you said, all kinds of different things. You'll have the past passenger parties, might have art auctions. Um, you're gonna have all of those kinds of things, but it's so much fun to ha do karaoke. I've stood on this very stage quite a few times. Uh, in fact, uh, more times than I'd like to admit, maybe with a drink in our hand, and we've just had a, uh, well, felt like we were karaoke superstars. It's actually my favorite song here, and there is a video out there, I hope you don't find it, but a great video of me singing Girls Just Wanna Have Fun on this very stage. Those of you who, uh, who know me and were with us, we had such an amazing time on that entire cruise. But once again, I love that getting on cruise ships is it brings those memories right back. So when I lead my group tours um, and have uh, you know big group cruises on board where we handle all the excursions and all of the details for you, this is usually the place where we'll meet to go out on our private excursions or just get together. Um, it's also a place to have a great party if you have a large incentive group on board. Okay, so now I'm headed into the Royal Theater. So when this was uh, built, when this class of ship was built, it was the largest theater ever built on a cruise ship, and it was one of the most sophisticated uh, operations that has ever been put together. Now with these mega ships that are almost twice as big as this, it's, got, it's gone crazy, but this is still a fantastic venue to see a show. Royal Caribbean has invested a ton of money, time, and energy into their entertainment. In fact, Nick Weir, who's the head of it, uh, incredibly well known, and he does an amazing job. So here you're gonna have multiple production shows. Um, this right now is set up for three and four night cruises. So you're gonna have multiple production shows on a short cruise like that. Um, and then when you do the longer cruises, they're also gonna add extra things in here so you'll have more comedians and other styles of entertainment. But follow me on down because it's really an impressive sight to see a, a theater this big on a cruise ship. So one interesting fun fact, um, when the theaters were first 
first built um, for the Voyager class, they had cups that they had ordered, you know, tons of them, and then they had these, these seat holders and they didn't actually fit. So they did fix that uh, with, with the evolution of the ship, but just a little fun uh, old fact. But you can just see that this is a spectacular place to see a show. You've got the new technology. They put in the updated screens up there as well. You've got two balcony levels. So the upper balcony is gonna be a floor above us. You have another balcony level that's just above. But uh, as you can see, this is a beautiful place to take in the Royal Caribbean Entertainment that is second to none in the industry. So now we are on deck four and we're just getting ready to go into Hook. So this is a brand new space on the newly amplified Navigator of the Seas and it's a New England style um, you know, fish and seafood restaurant. So I'm incredibly excited about this space. It debuted on the Symphony of the Seas and it's been a huge hit, which is why they've taken it. Uh, I, I'm sure they will eventually take it fleet wide, but they've expanded it to all the ships that are getting amplified. So when you come in, what you the, the feel, the, the whole idea is kind of like a New England cottage feel. So you see even the, all the decor, um, the fabrics that they've chosen very intensely. Intentionally. They also have a bar setting, which is kind of like an oyster bar, seafood bar uh, area. And then as you continue on, one thing that I love is that you have these huge windows looking out. Um, it actually looks out over to where the uh, running track is, and then you see the ocean just beyond that, but it brings a lot of light into the restaurant. So go ahead and follow me on through here. Um, there's a, a mix of seating. So you've got some bench seating, um, you've got two tops, four tops, and then the ability for them to put this together. Uh, and like all the restaurants on board, if you're interested in doing a buyout, it's something that you can definitely do. So maybe you have a large group and you wanna all dine uh, at the same time, that is something that's definitely possible. I really love this this uh, family style table as well. Um, but once again, just an absolutely beautiful space and it's all brand new. It's just built out on the newly amplified Navigator. So we're heading out of Hooked and my all time favorites so far are the clam chowder, excellent. Lobster, you can't go wrong, but the messy fish sandwich is delicious. I recommend that you get it a try. And right when I walk out, my smile gets super big and I get happy because it is my favorite bar on all Royal ships, the schooner bar. So follow me on in. As far as I'm concerned, if it doesn't have a schooner bar, it is not a royal ship. So this is one of the main reasons why everybody loves it. Um, they have a piano here. Um, always gonna have piano uh, throughout the day. Usually they'll, they'll take requests. It's kind of sing along, a lot of fun. Um, they also do, do different trivias and things like that in this lounge as well. Um, there's a TV there. I've seen them put football on. Two big TVs above the bar as well. Um, and as we walk through, you can see kind of the, the seating. Uh, but of course, it's all this nautical theme. And I don't know, I always have that, uh, there's always kind of that, even the smell of kind of the, the old wood and feel like you're on a pirate ship when you're uh, in the schooner bar. So let me head over to the main bar area. I have spent one or two hours of my life here sitting at these bars. How's it going? Excellent, excellent. So you can see they, they added these two new big screen TVs, perfect for uh, football season, um, but you've got the full bar set up, everything that you possibly need. And then of course, incredible Royal Caribbean bartenders. All right, so this is still the schooner bar that we're in. You can see the nautical themes, um, but we're moving out towards the Casino Royale. One of the things that they did also is they added some Park West throughout the entire cruise ship. Um, so just in case you're interested, you kind of have an art gallery all throughout. All right, so now we are into the Royal Casino, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a really large space uh, for a casino on a cruise ship. You're gonna have a mix of probably every game that you would wanna play. You've got all kinds of different slot machines. Um, up behind me, you're gonna have your tables, table games. Of course, they've got roulette, three card poker, blackjack. Um, one of the things that I really love is that they still have a live deal poker table. Um, I would like to play, uh, there you go, right here. Um, I like to play Texas Hold'em with a live dealer. I just think it's a better experience altogether, um, but they still have that. And then you can just see kind of all of the different uh, games that they have here. Um, this is a space that is, uh, is smoker friendly. So if that's something you're interested in, part of the casino you can smoke in, part of the casino you, uh, you can't smoke in. So one very last addition that I've noticed is that there are t TVs everywhere. So this is something that's relatively new for the casino. And of course, it's a great thing for everybody to keep you at the table. Um, but this is something that I really appreciate because you don't have to go to another space. It seems like just a few years ago, you'd have to go find any of those sports games you want to do and it'd only be in one venue. Royal's done a great job of expanding all the technology on this ship and all other ships so you're gonna get those sports games that you're looking for. Okay, so now we're heading out of the casino and before I headed into Boleros, I just wanted to point out here that this is uh, the, the Centrum area. You have a beautiful glass staircase going up, which is gonna go up into the promenade and a beautiful glass staircase over there that's going down to where Studio B would be, okay? So, but if you follow me over this way, um, I wanted to take you into Bolero. So like just about everything on board the ship, it got a great facelift in this uh, latest uh, amplification. So if you look here, you've got beautiful, beautiful furniture. This has all been reupholstered, all redone. Um, and the heart and soul of Bolero, as you can probably hear it in the background, is a Latin themed nightclub. So if you're into some flamenco, or you uh, just wanna get out and dance and have a great time, or you wanna go to the place that's the highest energy on the ship, 
in the evenings, this is gonna be it. You can see they've got the live band there, a pretty large uh, dance floor. And then if you follow me in, you can see some of the brand new uh, decor that uh, makes it feel like you're actually in, uh, in Little Havana, in Cuba. So we've got these beautiful new floor tiles that they just added on. And then I wanted to show this, uh, this beautiful m uh, mural just over here as well. And then you got the, the classic car, so it makes you think like you're riding in the back of a van. I was just yeah, on a, a cruise that got to go to Cuba. Unfortunately, it's not available currently, um, but I absolutely loved it. And when you're ready to go to Cuba, you let me know. So this is a spot a lot of times where they'll be setting up for photos because you've got this absolutely beautiful uh, mural behind me um, and it's a beautiful piece of art as well. But I'm gonna head into a space that a lot of people are really, really excited about for this. All of the new Amplified chips are getting them and that is, of course, Starbucks, okay? so. How's it going? Hello. So they've now added this to the Mariner of the Seas and the Navigator. Uh, they'll be adding it to the Explorer really soon and also the uh, the Odyssey of the Seas. But this is a full Starbucks like you're gonna encounter at your uh, your neighborhood. So let's see, uh, Grande Americano? Yes, sure. Sound good? Okay. So just like Starbucks, you have uh, up, up charge items if you wanna purchase them, different pastries and things, bottled waters, okay? Um, and then if you follow me around, what they've created is this really beautiful nook. I know it's gonna be really tough with the camera uh, to see, but they've created this really beautiful nook where it feels like a separate space in a coffee shop. So out there, I can hear boleros, it's a little bit louder. In here, they've added these great bench seats. And I did wanna point out one thing here that was brilliant. They also added both European and American outlets underneath. When you go to a Starbucks, you go to a coffee shop, a lot of times what you're doing is you're working on your laptop. So here, if I'm sitting here looking out, I've got a beautiful view out. Uh, I can plug my laptop or my phone in right here and don't have to go anywhere. But there's just a, an assortment of seats here. So maybe you're gonna grab and go, but this is an awesome little coffee shop concept. Yeah. All right, so now I am heading down onto uh, deck three and I'm gonna head right into Studio B Center Ice. So on the Voyager of the Seas, this was the concept that changed absolutely everything about cruising and the concept of what you could actually put on a cruise ship. So I remember my first Voyager class was the Explorer. And when I came in, I thought this was super cool. I was blown away by the fact at first that they actually had size uh, 15 ice skates that I could borrow. Um, then again, back then I was super excited as well that they also had size 15 rollerblades, but I don't think any Royal ship has rollerblades on it anymore, different story. Um, but what's so cool about this is it's much more than just an ice skating rink. They put on a full production show. So think about how many Royal Caribbean ships have this on and how many people that they employ. In fact, a lot of them are ex-Olympians, people who uh, were in, in the ice skating world. It's given them a whole nother venue to show what they're amazing at. So this is a multi-purpose venue. Obviously you can see it as an ice skating rink. I said they do the full shows. You can, uh, they have free skate time where you can go out yourself with your family. It's also utilized in a couple other ways. So they'll put a floor down on top of it, just like they would in a stadium. Uh, and then you'll have the Quest in here. You'll have different games and different entertainment options. And then also, since they amplified this, uh, one of the brand new features is laser tags. So they do glow in, the tar glow in the dark laser tag in here. Uh, it is family friendly and it is complimentary, but you wanna make sure that you make a reservation for it. This was a transformational space on any cruise ship. I still love it and they're still putting it on all their brand new ships. So it's something that works incredibly well. Okay, so now I'm heading out of Studio B um, and as part of the amplification and some of the changes they've made, they've moved a few spots around. So now the art gallery is here. Um, they're still gonna have all the full art auctions. You can meet with your Park West people on board. In fact, a lot of my clients do come on board to purchase art. So just something you wanna keep in mind. So we're gonna head over this way um, to the uh, photo gallery, which is now located here. Um, so you have full access to the photo gallery. These are relatively new with the amplification. Um, this is how you can pick out your photos. Um, all you have to do is use your CPAS card there. Digital, awesome. Um, I really appreciate the way they improved that entire experience. And then if you'll continue on over here, they have a portrait studio, so these curtains are gonna pull shut. Um, so maybe you wanna do fun portraits with your kiddos, your family, uh, maybe you have a multi-gen group. On these kind of cruises, we get a lot of times we'll have grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, the grandkids, cousins, everybody on. And so this is that perfect place where you can have those uh, professional memories made. Though on some of our trips uh, that we do, if you join Hard Travel on one of our group trips, a lot of times we'll bring our own photographer and videographer along, which is just a bonus for you so that you can get those services as well. All right, so I'm gonna continue on along deck three and we're gonna head straight into the main dining room. So right now is boarding day. We're currently in Miami. We're in the brand new Royal Caribbean terminal. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I just wanted to point out that things will be a little bit different on boarding day than they would throughout the entire cruise. To me, this is the the Royal Experience. When I first came on the Explorer of the Sea, Studio B was incredible, um, but also the main dining room was absolutely stunning. So if you just take a minute to look, I'm gonna walk into the middle here. Um, me personally, 
one of the things that I love about cruising is that when you go back on a ship that you've been on before, you get flooded back with memory. So I've been on the Navigator before, I've been on all the Voyager class ships, um, but right when I'm here, think about all the people that, that joined us on the, the last cruise that I was on here. Um, we had an amazing time and this was a big part of it because we sat with the same waiter every single night. Um, I really like that traditional experience where you have the early and the late seating. You also have my time, so you can dine anytime you'd like. If you do choose the my time route, please make sure that you make reservations. Otherwise, you're probably gonna wait for a little bit. So follow me on into the heart of the dining room. You have this massive chandelier right above me and it's right above the captain's table. So if you've ever had the, uh, the luxury or the ability to dine with the captain in this dining room, it's a magnificent experience. And the entire dining room is just spectacular. So even more so than on their newer ships, it's much wider for the balcony. So you get that feel that it's a lot more area. You feel like you're kind of in a grand mansion and not necessarily on a cruise ship. So let's head on back a little bit further. Each of the dining rooms on uh, Royal Caribbean ships has a theme. Um, you can see up here as well, you have this beautiful art of a woman dancing and then they're dancing behind her and you have this grand staircase. This is uh, used for a couple things. So the staircase, uh, the most memorable thing is of course, this is where this, the crew is gonna come out um, on the last dinner and say goodbye and sing and say farewell to you. Um, and it's actually usually kind of a sad moment because you've become really close friends with this person on three, four, seven uh, nights. I've even been on a 30 day cruise and really became attached to, to my uh, waiters and waitresses. But this is just kind of that grand staircase. This is also perfect for family photos. So just something you may want to keep in mind. Um, but uh, this is a great angle to look up and see the entire dining room, uh, whether you're dining on deck three, four, or five. I always try to ask for a seat that's either by the, the window um, or by the balcony. Um, can't always be accommodated, but uh, the more you cruise with Royal, the more status you get. Um, and if you're staying in a suite or something like that, you're going to get priority for things uh, like that. Okay, so now we're on deck two in the conference center. I just wanted to point this out because this is a fantastic option for those of you who are looking for um, some kind of you know, continuing education at sea, um, anything that you would require large conference space for, Royal Caribbean does an amazing job with. So this is just one of the spaces that can be divided up a couple different ways. There's another huge space across the way. This has been used for all kinds of events and activities. So if you are interested in putting together a large group so that you can have uh, maybe an incentive group at sea, or maybe it is uh, something that you want to do along the lines of, like I said, continuing education. We've worked with realtors, we've worked with nurses and things like that. This is a great way to do it because they take care of everything. They have all the catering all built in. A lot of the costs are already included in your cruise. So it's just something that you may want to consider. So right outside the conference room, you're gonna have your loyalty ambassador desk. I really like that it's kind of away from everything else. On a lot of the cruise ships, it's right in the middle. So when you get crowds in other spaces, it overflows. But this is where you're gonna meet with them and then they've got great seating on both sides so that you can uh, relax, but also remember that you can always set an appointment and that's something that I do recommend. Thank you so much for taking your time to join me on this tour of the beautifully brand newly amplified Navigator of the Seas. When you're ready to book a suite on board this ship, any ship in the entire Royal Caribbean fleet, reach out to Hard Travel. We are your Royal Caribbean suite experts. I'm a Diamond Plus member. I've been on over 30 cruises with Royal. I've been on their ships well over 100 times. I know all of the ins and outs so that you can maximize the most out of the suite class on board Royal Caribbean International.